Not all that shines is gold, and not all the real estate agencies offers are as good as they might seem. Hey, you want to know what real estate agents are hiding from us? Here are some of the tricks you should know before renting or even buying a new house. One of the nifty tricks up realtor sleeves is wide-angle camera lenses. Thing is, such lenses can visually expand the space and make a teeny tiny room look much spacier. If you just Google something like wide-angle lens for real estate photography, you'll see a bunch of offers online. So the realtors don't miss out on a chance to make the property they need to sell look more spacious. We all like high-quality pics, and they sure look appealing. But in the case of real estate photos online, you should consider checking offers with lower-quality photos. You risk getting inspired by the fancy pics online at first, and then get disappointed when you see the property in real life. Yep, in 2023, even an apartment can catfish you. So beware! There's more to the photos of apartments online. Sometimes, agents can Photoshop furniture in the photos. Like, the room is empty, but in the photos, you can see a nice couch, coffee table, and stuff. Sometimes realtors do that to sort of visualize what you can potentially do with the apartment if you rent or buy it. So, if you stumble upon a fancy furnished apartment online, don't hesitate to ask a couple of extra questions to the realtor. Otherwise, the expectation versus reality difference might be way too harsh. Some things may seem clean, and sometimes the stains may be altogether invisible. For example, on darker fabrics. The realtor may try to convince you that this couch is brand new. But if you have doubts, there's a trick that can help you out. Use a black light detector. It can help spot stains, bed bugs, and many other unwanted things while you're checking the apartment. There are plenty of affordable options online, like this one. If there's much wood in the apartment, it's great, as it's a natural material. Plus, it looks fancy. However, any wood can have hidden problems. For instance, a high level of moisture, which may lead to a whole bunch of unpleasant consequences, like mold. To make sure there's nothing suspicious about the wood in the apartment, you may want to check the moisture level with a special tool like this wood moisture meter. It can help identify hidden problems and save potentially expensive repairs. Sometimes, realtors rely more on psychology than on nifty tricks. You see, there are plenty of things we pay attention to when we're in a new place. The sense of smell has a tight connection with our emotions in general. And our emotions have a strong link to spending. There was an experiment trying to figure out how scents influence customers' behavior. The researchers had three options during the experiment. No scent, a simple scent, and a complicated scent. For 18 days, they would watch the customers in a home decoration store. The study proved that the 100 customers who shopped in the store with a simple orange scent spent about 20% more than usual. You see what I'm driving at? This scent trick can also be used for real estate. The apartment you're visiting might be somewhat shabby and not as classy as you would like it to be. But if the scent in the apartment is pleasant, you are likely to subconsciously perceive this apartment as a nice place. So real estate agents are perfectly aware of that. Sometimes they use diffusers and other things to cozy up the place with a pleasant smell and make it appear more appealing. But be careful! A too strong and artificial scent may be there to cover up something unpleasant, like sewage odors. Now, let's say the diffuser scent in the apartment is so strong it makes you suspicious. In this case, you may want to check the place a little bit closer to make sure the realtor just went overboard when using the scent and there's nothing nasty to hide or cover up. It might be hard to check everything with the naked eye. But luckily, many devices on the market will do all the dirty work for you. A mold detector may come in handy. Plus, these devices have a wide range of other applications. For instance, this little guy can detect and display the humidity of the environment to help users understand the situation. It also provides real-time monitoring and real-time display of carbon dioxide concentration per cubic meter. Perfect! Sometimes you're not alone when you're visiting an apartment your real estate agent offers. 
And what if I tell you that the people who came to take a look at the very same apartment may be fake? I mean, the people are real for sure, but they're not going to buy this place. Apparently, there may be fake viewers. These are the people that are meant to create an illusion of competition or scarcity. The real purpose of why they're here is to evoke the immediate interest. This way, the potential real buyer has to act faster in order not to lose the opportunity. So they won't bargain for a lower price and will be sort of pushed to sign the documents as fast as possible. An average European home can survive for up to 400 years as it's made of bricks. In the United States, on the contrary, many houses are wood framed, which means they won't last that long and they will need constant repairs. Wood framed houses are a common thing in the US due to the abundance of forests, but there's a downside to it. Wood is super vulnerable when it comes to infestation, bugs. And while some realtors are honest about potential problems, including this one, Others prefer to conceal this information. But there are a couple of true signs the house has been infested. First off, you see these little small pinprick holes in the walls? That's a red flag. The same goes for peeling paint and super squeaky doors. Yikes. Some houses may have a bad reputation. I'm talking about stigmatized property. Such houses are associated with negative events. These may be criminal events or even rumors of haunting. Even though these events may only be rumors, it still keeps renters and buyers away. Thing is, state laws vary concerning whether the seller must disclose a stigma or not. Realtors may choose not to disclose this information too. So beware if a house you're planning to buy is way too cheap. Something you don't know about might have happened there. Details are essential especially if you're planning to buy something as pricey as a house. Unfortunately, some real estate agents consciously turn a blind eye to details that may turn out to be essential. For instance, they may never mention some occasional crack in the walls. While some of them may be insignificant, and they appear because of thermal and moisture issues, other cracks, also known as subsidence cracks, can be really serious. This is how you can tell if a crack is a subsidence. They appear at a 45-degree angle, they're jagged, and they're typically wider at the top. All these red flags are a true sign that the building is going downwards. Talking about new structures, they're not perfect either. It used to take more time to build a house, but the building pace has changed significantly. It definitely influenced the quality of the newer houses. Even if you're choosing a brand new house, you still have to be in detective mode to make sure the house you want to buy isn't going to fall apart in a couple of years. So next time you go to a viewing, make sure the brickwork isn't poor, the carpentry isn't wonky, and the staircases are secured properly. Also, don't fall for fancy design. A good designer can create a miraculous house with the cheapest materials, but such a design won't last long. It's safer to choose a simpler design with good quality and add your own artistic touch when you move in. Looking for something disgusting? Well, have you come to the right place? Let me explain. Oh, it's spring cleaning time! You walk around the house humming a merry tune. When you hear a faint buzzing noise, you stop and strain your ears, and here it goes again, seemingly from behind the wall in the kitchen. You come closer and notice a brown spot on the wall that wasn't there just yesterday. You touch the spot and oh, the horror! The drywall sinks inside beneath your fingers and an entire cloud of wasps fly out of the hole, buzzing indignantly. You run for your life and the wasps chase you outside for disturbing their nest. When you're far enough, the buzzing cloud returns into the house. It seems it's their home now, not yours. It might sound like some movie, but in fact, wasps do build their nests in houses, especially wooden ones. They prefer dark and closed spaces, so they can make a home in a tree hollow, a compost box, a shed, or your very own attic. Probably the worst thing is that you're likely not to notice a wasp infestation inside your house until it's too late. In spring, wasp queens migrate to find a new home and lay their eggs. If one of them likes your house, it will crawl inside some cozy, dark nook and hide there. Within a week or so, 
The first baby wasps will be born, and if the space is too confined, they'll start gnawing on the wooden parts of it to make room for their growing colony. It might take a few years before you notice the symptoms of an infestation, though. Wasps are believed to return to the same place every year because they leave behind their pheromones. And the colony will be growing with every passing year, too. Wasps will be munching through wooden boards and even plaster to make themselves comfortable. And you might hear their rustling and buzzing while they're at work. If you do hear strange sounds from behind your walls, don't wait long and call pest control. It means the colony is already big enough to cause you trouble. In the worst-case scenario, the innards of your house might be chock full of wasps by then. The last and most obvious symptom of an infestation, though, is when you see brown spots or streaks on your drywall. That means the wasps are already a hair's breadth away from you and are about to break inside your living space. They can easily chew through drywall, and you might end up meeting the unexpected guests at night or while having dinner. Wasps are probably the worst pests to be infested with. Not only do they undermine your abode, but they're also very protective of their territory. If they break outside of their space between the walls and into your house proper, they'll immediately attack you as an intruder. How rude! And wasp stings aren't to be trifled with, especially if you have an allergy. There are numerous species of wasps that can dwell inside people's homes. But perhaps the most vicious ones are yellow jackets. They have a distinct bright yellow and black striped body, are bigger than other wasps, and their sting is much more unpleasant. Add to that their natural aggressiveness, and you get a flying insect that you don't want to meet at all. Still, if you notice any of the symptoms of wasp infestation, make sure you don't take any action on your own and call the professionals. Working with strong chemicals like pesticides is unsafe, and in addition, you can do yourself more harm than good if you don't know exactly what you're doing. It takes skill and knowledge to get rid of all the pests in your house. And if you leave just a couple of wasps, especially the queen, all your efforts might be in vain. So leave it to the experts. A more inconspicuous but no less dangerous bug that you don't want to have at home either is a wood borer. There are dozens of different species of those too, and some are no more than a nuisance, while others can be pretty destructive. Wood borers get their name for, well, boring wood, as in eating holes in it. When these bugs are ready to lay their eggs, they find some cozy place with lots of timber around, such as beneath your wood flooring, for instance, and rest there. The hatching larvae are hungry, so they start munching on the delicious wood their caring mom left them on. They can eat almost 24-7 and only stop when they finally mature and are ready to go explore the world outside. As they do, they leave small exit holes in the wooden items they'd been living in. The danger is that these beetles are silent as opposed to wasps, so you won't hear a thing while they're snacking on your favorite cupboard. The first sign of their presence you're likely to notice is the exit hole, and that means the wood borer has already done some damage inside. While most species of borers don't do much harm to your dwelling except for those exit holes, some of them can be a huge trouble. For example, the European house borer can do a lot of damage to an older house if it decides to lay its eggs there. Although these bugs like to feed on sapwood, which is more likely in newer houses, they can still make nests in older ones too. And given that the European house borer is pretty big, up to about three quarters of an inch, the exit holes it leaves are quite large and noticeable too. Other borers still, like the Queensland pine beetle, native to Australia, often eat through older houses, undermining their structure completely. If you happen to have an infestation of these guys, the best course of action is to call pest control immediately. The only good news, perhaps, is that wood borers don't attack humans. Well, that's something. Now, these bugs won't eat you or your house, but having them inside your home is still unpleasant and dangerous. You know them well – cockroaches. And if you've seen one in your house during the day, I've got bad news for you. There are already dozens, if not hundreds, of these pests crawling around the place. Cockroaches are nocturnal creatures, and seeing one or two in your kitchen when you come for a midnight snack is not that bad yet. But when they appear in broad daylight, 
it means some numbers of their colony are already growing desperate. It would do you good to call pest control fast in that case. Cockroaches prefer to live in places where there's plenty of food, water, and human environment to snuggle into. This is a perfect description of an older human dwelling. There's more than enough space for roaches to hide and prosper, and people themselves provide all the food and water the pests need. Their favorite snacks are meat, starch, and sweet stuff, but they don't mind ransacking your garbage bin or pantry. They won't eat through your walls or furniture, and in that regard, they're pretty harmless. But cockroaches are known carriers of various dangerous germs. If a cockroach rummaged in, let's say, your sugar bowl, and then you put that sugar into your tea, you've got a chance of contracting something nasty. And of course, the more roaches there are in your house, the higher this possibility is. It's not hard to recognize a cockroach infestation. The first sign you should look out for is the smell. Roaches emit odorous substances into the air, making your home smell oily and musty. The stronger the odor, the more pests there are, so don't hesitate to call the specialist even if you haven't seen a single cockroach yet. A much more significant symptom of their presence in your house is finding shed roach skin around the place. They have a chitin carapace that they replace from time to time as they grow. So, if you find one, it means there's at least an entire cockroach family somewhere around. But much more likely, there's a whole colony already. Finally, nothing can be more compelling than seeing a live cockroach with your own eyes, right? If you notice a grown one, that might be good news for you yet. Roaches habitually travel in search of the best place to live in. So when there's an adult cockroach in your house that you see at night, it might still not have begun a family of its own. But if you enter the kitchen and see one or more smaller cockroaches, well, that's bad luck. It means their parents are somewhere inside your house, as well as their siblings. By the way, although the kitchen is, by all means, the most fruitful place for these creepers, you might also spot them in your bathroom while taking a shower. Roaches find delight in munching on soap, so it's no surprise they crawl into this warm and moist room of your house. Well, I find this whole thing disgusting. Have a good day. Let's crack a burglar's coat, tape on the door handle, or a slice of cheese on the car's hood, and many more can be signs that you're being watched by a crook. Burglars don't just pick a house randomly and rob it. They'll often monitor the home before they take action. They want to know more about the house and its security. They leave markings on the home, garage door, post box, or storage unit. Get to know these markings and know what they symbolize, and you'll be able to better protect your home from the bad guys. If you see a circle drawn, that means in the eyes of the thieves, your house is a piece of cake to rob. Maybe it has no home security system set up. Yet, a barred circle means to avoid entry. Maybe the home has high-tech alarms, CCTV cameras, or a dog. Ladder-like lines means there are valuables visible in the home, so there are items in the house worth stealing. If someone sprays the letter M in the garbage, that means empty in the morning, and N refers to empty at night. Police forces have issued warnings about the code, but keep in mind that some of these signs are actually harmless messages used by road workers to communicate about pipelines and so on. If you see some evidence of key bumping, don't enter the house. Key bumping is a technique where burglars use a similar key made with a heavier metal than the pins to file down the pins on the inside of the lock. Plus, victims may encounter some problems while claiming insurance in such cases because this technique may leave no sign of forced entry on the outside of the lock. You're being robbed and you can't prove it to the insurance company. Sounds like a nightmare. Lock picking is a less forceful technique. This one will leave marks on the doorknob, such as light scratches around the lock, but the real signs will be found on the inside of the lock on the pins. They'll have dents. Heavy scrapes or marks on your doorknob can also indicate that someone has entered your home. Thieves sometimes use screwdrivers to break the pins in the lock. If you see deep scratches, marks, or a widening of the keyhole, be careful when you get inside. Thieves may stick a tape, and it's usually a see-through one, on the door handle. Suppose the tape is still there a day or so later. The squatters believe that the owner is away since the door hasn't been used. 
This strategy has become alarmingly prominent in Dublin. The police warned people to be vigilant and remove any tape immediately after seeing it. Some of these markings are left by dog thieves, signaling that your home has a money-wise worthy breed to steal. Supposedly, red chalk marks are for large dogs, and yellow and pink marks refer to medium and small dogs. The police advise dog owners to keep their eyes open around their properties and report any such instances to the police. Lastly, pay extra attention when walking their pets. One of the keys to being safe at a house is having good security and knowing your property. For instance, if your front door locks are still responsive but function slowly, it may be a sign of a burglar attempt. This might be because of a tactic called the vulnerability method. Thieves make the door lock weaker with time. They use tools or objects to deteriorate the lock without leaving any traces. You may think your lock is old and simply postpone calling a locksmith, but that would be a huge mistake. Similarly, the key might turn inside the lock with delay. If it's harder to turn inside, this is usually the first sign of an attempted break-in. So, this is probably the most important warning sign you should take into consideration. Even security door locks are vulnerable to break-ins. Did you know that in Churchill, Canada, locals keep their car doors unlocked? They don't do this to invite the thieves, but to survive a potential polar bear attack. The town has the largest number of polar bears in the world. Imagine a resident faced with a polar bear and another person's car is nearby. They can quickly shelter inside that car. How about learning some safety tips to avoid purse snatching? Firstly, don't carry a shoulder bag over your shoulder. I know, I know, it's what the bag is designed for. But this makes it easier for a thief to grab your bag. For example, carrying a small clutch-type handbag underneath your arm is safer. Shopping with someone else is safer than shopping alone. On shopping days, and in general, don't carry more money than you would possibly need for all your credit cards in the same purse. Carry only what you need for the day. You might think, it's just for a sec, but don't leave your purse in shopping carts or on counters. And there's the matter of scams. When you believe you can't be scammed, you might let yourself be more vulnerable to scammers. Scams target everyone from all backgrounds, ages, and incomes. They can catch you off guard and when you're not expecting it, using new technologies, products, or even services to hook you to either give them your money or personal details. How to be scam-proof? Firstly, keep in mind that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Secondly, don't respond to calls about your computer asking for remote access, even if they mention a well-known company. Scammers will often ask you to turn on your computer to fix a problem or install a free upgrade. This is actually a virus to get your passwords and personal details. Lastly, pay attention to unusual payment requests. Scammers will often ask you to use an unusual payment method like a preloaded debit card, gift card, or iTunes card. A carjacker and a slice of cheese. What connection can there be? Imagine you walk to your car and see melted cheese on the engine cap. You initially thought that it was probably some kind of a prank, so you begin to clean the cheese. Naturally, it takes ages under the hot sun. Pay attention to your surroundings. Someone might be watching you from a distance and waiting for the right time. They can just jump into your car and run away while you're not looking at the driver's door, busy cleaning the cheese near the passenger side. Did you know that you might have an extra key in your car? Some cars have valet keys hidden under the owner's manual or in the toolkit in the trunk. If your car has that spare pair, take it out immediately. If you know where it is, thieves will know it too. Plus, don't think you have a perfect hiding spot for your spare keys. Car thieves know where to look. For example, some people hide the extra key under the bumper or beneath the floor mat. Thieves routinely check those places as well. Speaking of car theft, now it might be a good time to talk about the habits and strategies of car burglars. They don't really go for wide open and visible locations like in front of houses and driveways. Dark and secluded places such as apartment buildings, carports, and underground parking garages appeal to them because it's quieter. He could hear if somebody was coming. Have you heard of vehicle identification number, aka VIN? This is a unique number for every car out there. You can engrave the VIN on your car windows. 
This makes your car less valuable on the black market for its parts. Plus, changing the car windows costs quite a lot, so crooks try to avoid such cars. Overall, it's better not to be an inviting, easy target. So, do you have some real-life stories about all these?